today we are going to be discussing all the features that we are not including in our own van design. And uh, we'll also be cooking lunch. There are a lot of practical issues with this van and it's got nothing really to do with the amount of space inside because we lived in a car in New Zealand for eight months and that was about a third Ten months, thank you very much. Ten months in a car and it was about a third, nearly exactly a third the floor space of this van. Even though it's three times as big, it seems almost as restrictive as living in that car. This is the size of the saucepan that came with the van and this is the size of the sink. I will grant you that they do fit but have you ever tried washing up something that just fits plus this out? This handle sticks out. I'll t make the sink a lot bigger. Well, what is it? What is it called? Is it a farmhouse sink or the one, something? The well, one that comes over the, the edge. Yeah, the one that juts out because this yeah. space, like you said, is useless. I think having a bigger mm. sink is actually one uh, uh, a priority because then you can put some of the washing, you know, in if you don't want to do it right away. Even though it's a small space, I think a big sink can actually be really helpful and mm. kind of an essential, especially if you're the type of person uh, that likes cooking. Yeah, you know, which we are. Yeah. Speaking of cooking, this was something that came with the van. Let, let me just put this... There you go. Now you try and light the back hob, which is, uh, by the way, uh, there. To turn this on, mm. obviously you have to basically get your fingers in the fire. <laughs> and to turn it off, it's even worse because this is already hot at that point. Yeah. You might as well spread the hobs you can even add a third one with this much space like all the way out mm. because this is no use mm. to anybody number one uh do not include the small sink number two do, do not include a small fob this is just us you know some people may not need a big sink or even two hobs some people may be okay with one hob because they don't cook that much or they just cook things that need boiling water or something but for us, we love to cook pasta sauces, we love to cook hot breakfast, we boil eggs whilst making pasta, whilst doing something else, so like, we need the space. We also have a problem with this. If you're going to be designing a full-time home in your van, then you need to be able to uh, ventilate your, 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 your space uh, um, when it's cold, when it's uh, uh, raining and really windy. Now, these skylights, which are the standard camper van uh, uh, skylights, um, basically will fly off their hinges when it's windy and they nearly did uh, when multiple we times. multiple times so, uh, because we are traveling through uh, Scandinavia uh, right right now and funnily enough we're doing it in the um, uh, like the, the turn of winter so autumn going going into winter it's cold it's rainy it's windy all of it perfect there's even minus 10 minus 20 man no oh, actually hasn't been minus 20 yet because this place does not have an uh, uh, an extraction uh, fan we couldn't ventilate the uh, the the vehicle eff effectively because also these uh, you no know, camper van windows they also open outwards like that so when the wind catches them they're also in danger of flying off so the only way we could do it is actually open the front um, windows, windows uh, just the rolly down ones definitely avoid using basically a just uh, an opening in the ceiling <laughs> to ventilate because if it's raining you're gonna get wet you wouldn't want to open it if it's windy it's gonna fly off its hinges oh and while we're talking about suffocating well this is something that uh, uh, you should avoid not having aka you should definitely have this is uh, alarm systems uh, for the various type of systems they're using for example the gas system here there's no alarm system to tell us whether there's gas leaking even though we're gonna smell it if we're sleeping I don't think we might not wake up and smell it. oh it smells of gas I should better wake up properly and, and, and fix this problem there's not a carbon monoxide uh, um, um, sensor anywhere in this van so we even had one in the yurt we had a carbon monoxide sensor in the yurt, but not in the van. There needs to be an alarm that will definitely wake you up if your gas turns off in the middle of the night and your van, van temperature drops <laughs> and basically starts, starts freezing. The van needs to speak to you. It needs to tell you what is happening with what the systems. Wrong? And FYI, you know, insulation doesn't really have any. So None. what you should avoid doing 
is not insulating your vehicle. Now, if you look at the van and you see the metal work of the actual vehicle, as you can see, that is the body of the car. That is metal, that is cold. So all the heating that, 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 that we're using right now, trying to keep the van up to um, 20, 20, degrees. 20 degrees, is going out through these sort of holes. Now also behind these stuff, there usually is no if foam whatsoever, or about maximum five millimeters of foam. The areas where your piping is, uh, where the gas is, all of, all of those things where the water is, needs to be very well insulated because it will freeze. It's simple as that. Just another thing whilst we're talking about heating and insulation. The heating vents are all at the front of the vehicle. They're all basically where our feet are right now. If you don't know, heat rises up so it, that's why it's released from the bottom and it rises up to warm up the yep. rest of the vehicle however it gets trapped here yeah so actually it is 25 and a half degrees in the van right now i can tell you it's not 25 it's and a half degrees. 25 the 25 and a half degrees up yeah. here <laughs> if you sit over there by uh, in well, where the swivel seats are it is not. You, you feel chill there. Or you're going to sit in the bed at the back of the van. It's not that temperature. Yeah. By the way, the mashed potato is done. So do you want to... Well, the hot water's boiled. Yeah, I turned it off. Ah. Also, this kettle is a really bad design. But I'm not going to mark that, the van down. That's not the van's fault. <laughs> Another thing that we would love to avoid in our own van design are uh, sticky out handles. It's uh, a hazard and an obstacle in a tiny space, yeah. especially this one. Uh, <laughs> however, these handles are not overly bad because... Let's demonstrate here. So, as you can see, if you were walking along, this is nice and smooth. So as you come, you would smooth over and over. But they do have um, uh, designs in here for, for cupboards that are good. Uh, they only have two examples. Uh, this one well, is the easiest one to show. You push it in and then you can open it. Yeah. Voila! And then if you wish to close it, do that and you push it in. And now it's locked and it won't open. You should also avoid putting things like this, some sort of ledge or uh, edge or anything, in the walkway path. Can't tell you how many times both of us have hit not only our heads but elbows and thighs and whatever else because you open the door and you come in whack your head another one is over here these are swivel seats for the where the driver sits you get up and boom hit your head here because this is this height and then the ceiling is actually all the way up there and that is a very sharp edge to hit your head on very yeah so do not include sharp edges I mean a lot of this van actually is a bit curved, however, yeah. however, like, if, because it's so narrow as well. So first, do not include um, edges like like obstructions in the walkway, and second, do not create really narrow <laughs> walkways. <laughs> I'm not a particularly broad person, but even for me, this corridor, especially this choke point here, which I am wedged in, is a little too narrow. Come here. Okay, get past. See, managed it. This whole shenanigans that's going on is not because, you know, it's a small space. It can be done whilst having plenty of space to move around. It's the design of it that has made it so inadequate and stupid. For example, the fridge here. Now the van curves up, so the widest point of the van is at the base, and the van curves up slightly as you go to the roof. So why would you put the fridge further up the van? If you were to move the fridge closer to the front and have them like zigzagged, that way you have a wider space here to, you know, or have a get past. Or have a collapsible sh shower area. Or have a collapsible shower area, because shower cubicles are usually the biggest single like block apart from the bed in a van. The other narrow choke point in this van is there me no the point between that table and that kitchen shelf usually it has this on all right milk all right stuff so we so the turnage you have to remove everything or, ri or risk uh, uh you know going Turn it so around squeeze past <laughs> and then knock something off there 
Okay, so there you go. There was a reason for me doing this. I need to get the bread. Exactly. Also, you should avoid putting useless cupboards, such as you know, storage is very important. So you might say, "Oh, this if if there's a, if there's storage, then it can't be useless, can it?" Oh, oh contraire! <laughs> we found the most useless cupboard in the entire world, and it just. You just hear it. We turn a corner and doo, doo, doo. there's no real hooks anywhere. Not at all. Okay. None. Yeah. No. As you see, our jackets are hanging on the uh, TV stand, which doesn't have a TV. I think one of the biggest uh, uh, drawbacks that we have found with this fan is the uh, the way that it handles electricity. What do you mean? So camper vans are meant to be off grid, and this one doesn't have solar panels. Doesn't have solar panels. Mm hmm. Uh, Get to that Avoid in a minute. not including the solar panel. But there is a leisure battery which we can drain completely. It's lithium ion. Great for that. Love that. We can drain it completely, not reliant on anything. We can plug things into the 12 volt, you know, plugs, of which there are three. One in the front, which doesn't work unless the car is on, but that's connected to the car battery, so that makes sense. There are two also. There's one up by the cupboards here by the table, and there's one in the garage below, which we never use. These work when the car is switched off. Brilliant but not many things run on 12 volts. There are one, two, three, I think four or five 230 volt plugs in this van. So stunning. Oh, we can, no, we can't use them. Can't use them. You have, can't to, you use have them. to be plug, plugged into electricity, yep. like, like a campsite or basically um, on, or on the grid. You can't even run them when the van is on. For us, we're definitely going to avoid restricting our off-grid capabilities. Like, mm. we want to ma make the van like completely off-grid, so mm. we need to make sure that our batteries can sustain the, the, the proper plugs. We've had to go so far as to buy an inverter that gets plugged into the 12 volt, and then we can plug a plug in. Otherwise, I think we would have been driven crazy. We've already done quite a bit of research yeah. on, on van designs as it so is. So, we're, we're pretty, I would say, mid-experienced on that. What a van life habitation can be, and what small spaces, how, how functional they can yeah, be, yeah, and how functional they can be. I'm curious. Do you think that someone who is not used to this at all would find this many, shall we say, problems in uh, in, in in the van as we have, or, or do you think there would be as much of a bother to them? I think anybody will uh, find this layout inconvenient for a long time. When we see all of these faults, we don't think, oh, van life, uh, van life is horrible, van life is this and that, I will never try, it's not, it's not a full-time full solution. We think, no. we think okay. Uh, exactly the, the, what we've done in this video, this is what we're going to improve for yeah. our one. Or... Yeah, we think, well, the, the person, the, the person or team that designed, designed this van did not really know that much about tiny space living most likely. Well, somebody who's not experienced in van life and, and has not watched uh, so, so, so many other YouTubers attempting it and, mm. and designing amazing things, they'll be more inclined to basically be more prejudiced uh, to, to, towards their findings and say, well, I'm not going to try van life anymore, it's not for me because X, Y and Z <laughs> does not work well. And instead of thinking, hey, I can design it better, because also um, the idea of designing designing it by yourself and uh, etc. can be really overwhelming for some people. So I think that's the main difference, that it's, it's an inconvenient design in a lot of ways mm. uh, for anybody, <laughs> but the conclusions that people, people draw uh, mm. might be different, you know. It's not like, well, Perhaps. if this is inconvenient, mm. why would you even try and fix it? Mm. It's like, well, because it can be really, really good. What other things do you think that we and other van dweller lifestylists should definitely avoid in their van? If you've got anything else, please let us know down in the comments below, because this van definitely does not have uh, examples of everything. Uh, so we would like to sh uh, get a discussion going on down there between you and everyone else who is interested in this topic. And, and also we need your ideas because, yeah. you know, uh, we are getting in a full swing to design our van. Subscribe for that below and we will see you next time.